that is my guilty pleasure snack. I probably shouldn't be emitting this because it's uh, it sounds very disgusting, but I assure you it is very tasty. <laughs> So in this series, I'll be doing things old school by sending personalized handwritten letters to my guests. Oh my god, my handwriting is like atrocious. Oh, no autocorrect is jealous. My English is struggles. Eh. Hey everyone, my name is Leonard. I am working as an in-house chef for Mila Singapore. And today I'm going to be answering some questions that uh, Mothership has very kindly sent to me. So let's, let's read this. Uh, it's actually nice to receive something that's handwritten because you know in this day and age everything is digitalized and it's nice to see something handwritten as opposed to just a font. So let's jump right into it. What is your guilty pleasure snack? Uh, okay, there's this thing that I do. I would like to believe that I invented it, but in actuality, I'm pretty sure I didn't. I call it dessert toast. So what you would do is you would actually take a piece of bread, it can be just like simple white gardenia bread. Of course, whole wheat is more healthy and you would toast it so that the the surface of it gets nice and crisp so that it forms this like shield and then you would throw on like any leftover chocolate that you have like Kit Kats are a really good example because I Kit Kats melt so well let it toast for another minute or two and then like all the melt the, the Kit Kat and the chocolate and everything goes it becomes like a spread basically and you can put like fruits like bananas or dried Cranberries, you can put like nuts if you want to get real fancy with it. That is my guilty pleasure snack. I probably shouldn't be emitting this because it's uh, it sounds very disgusting, but I assure you it is very tasty. I cannot cook. What's the easiest dish I can make at home to impress my parents? Teach me, please. Like, I used to do like this six minute ramen egg where the yolk is really soft and gooey and the outside is cooked, uh, the kind of egg that you would get in ramen. And when I did that the first time, my mom absolutely loved it and she actually asked me to teach her the recipe. You can check out the video on my Instagram because I just did a video on that recently. Can you share a recipe using Indomie that you can make at home? For me, like a dry noodle like this, usually I would do like a fried egg which you can see on the on the packaging. Spring onions are probably the most versatile, versatile like Asian herbs. Seafood is so easy to throw into anything like shrimp. I mean, who doesn't love shrimp, right? Shrimp is, is tasty and you can throw it in. You can do like diced chicken pieces. Was MasterChef as intense as it was on TV? There are a lot of things that I can't find. Anyone see the spices? I'm starting to lose a lot of time. So there's a lot of like mental stress that you don't really see on camera. Um, on camera, it's, it's just kind of frantic and we're all running about because there's, there's a clock that's ticking and we don't have a lot of time. But it is definitely more intense uh, than it seems on TV. Uh, why did you decide to become a chef full time? I was actually trained as a mechanical engineer and I worked as an engineer for about four and a half to five years. But food has always been a huge passion of mine. So about two years ago, uh, I just decided to up and quit with no real plan and just try to move into the food world and to see if I could merge my passion and uh, career together. What are you doing at home during this CB period? Uh, I've been cooking a lot more. I've been spending a lot more time with my parents. Um, but also I have more free time to kind of read and like watch YouTube videos which helps me find inspiration for new dishes that I want to try or things that I want to cook. And I actually just bought this digital piano, uh, which will be interesting because I don't even know how to read musical notes. So yeah, this is going to be my project for the month. Uh, I just got this yesterday, so let me see if I can play you something uh, which I learned in like 10 minutes. What is the first thing you would like to do once circuit breaker is over? I would like to go back to the gym. I also miss eating out a lot. Um, 
you know, the social element of eating is so important that we don't really think about and just being able to have a meal with friends is going to be amazing after all this is over. Any advice or words of wisdom for people during this period of uh, circuit breaker? Ah oh, man, there's like so many things I want to say. But first of all, you, you guys should all stay in. You know, it's it's so paramount to be safe, it's, if not just for yourself and for the people around you. You know, I, I choose not to go out, not just because I want to be safe, but also because I know that if anything happens to me, I will very likely infect my parents and I could never live with the guilt of that. I think you have to find a routine. Like the first week of Circuit Breaker was bad for me because I was like waking up at whatever time I wanted. I was just kind of finding stuff to fill in the day. Once you have that routine down, it makes things so much easier. There is so much at our fingertips. We just have to figure out how to harness or tap onto that. Thanks for sending all your questions. I hope you guys enjoyed the session and uh, I had a lot of fun doing it. See you guys. Stay safe and stay healthy.